The Mobile Connectivity Trailer is designed to be a rapidly deployable communication solution for areas with minimal or non-existent cellular service. The Mobile Connectivity Trailer's compact size and lightweight enable it to be quickly transported to remote areas where other larger mobile solutions would not be a viable option. Following some basic instruction, it is possible for one or two people to deploy the mobile connectivity trailer inside of 20 minutes. For the purposes of this training video, the mobile connectivity trailer will be referred to as the MCT or MCT unit. The MCT could be towed to the location that requires communications coverage utilizing a properly equipped tow vehicle. The MCT is rated to have a maximum weight of 4,000 pounds. However, the tow vehicle should always be equipped and rated to tow a trailer weighing the maximum allowable weight of 4,000 pounds. When choosing the location for the MCT, ensure that the space is in close proximity to the area that requires coverage, is adequately level, and has a clear line of sight to the southwest sky. Southwest is the direction from which the satellite antenna will receive its signal, so obstructions in that direction may prevent proper operation. Park the MCT in the chosen space and chalk the wheels to prevent any rolling of the unit. The MCT can be left connected to the tow vehicle or unhitched at this time. If it is decided to leave the MCT hitched to the tow vehicle during operation, be sure to disconnect the trailer plug from the tow vehicle in order to avoid activating the Deployed Equipment Alarm System. This system prevents the MCT unit from being towed when certain pieces of equipment are not properly stowed. Use the four corner jacks to level and stabilize the MCT. Unpin the rear corner jacks and rotate them so that the sand pad is positioned toward the ground. Then turn the crank handle to extend the jack leg. Also, if equipped, the forward outriggers can be extended up to four feet on each side to provide greater stability to the MCT. The MCT may also be equipped with outrigger indicator lamps these lamps are mounted to the MCT above the outriggers and project a red arc on the ground around the outer limits of the outrigger. In dark conditions, these lamps provide a useful warning for those working around the MCT, eliminating a potential trip hazard. The switch that controls the outrigger's lamps is labeled and is located within the MCT at the control center. Another useful option in dark conditions are the exterior panning and tilting work lamps located around the MCT. There are typically four positioned at each face, curbside, street side, front, and rear. Each light head can be repositioned in two axes to illuminate any specific work area at night. Once the MCT is parked and level, electrical power must be provided to the unit. Prior to doing so, Ensure that all of the electrical circuit breakers are in the off position. The electrical circuit breaker panels are located on the front interior wall of the MCT unit. If equipped and desired, electrical power can be provided by operating the onboard generator. Otherwise, power can be applied to the MCT at the power inlet that is located at the forward curbside exterior of the unit. A commercial power cable is included for this purpose. If operating the generator, the most convenient location to start the generator is at the remote start panel, which is located within the interior of the MCT. Start the onboard generator by holding the start and stop switch in the up position. In doing so, the diesel fuel generator will initiate an automatic priming and preheat cycle. Once the generator starts and continues to run, release the switch. The generator can also be started at the generator control panel which is located outside of the MCT, accessible by removing the weather cover in the event that it is required. It may take a few moments for the generator to fully stabilize and produce power output. Electrical power is available when the fuel gauge and LCD screen become illuminated, which are located adjacent to the generator start and stop switch. Energize each circuit by toggling each circuit breaker to the on or up position. Once the circuits are energized, set the climate control unit to cool mode via the remote thermostat. The remote thermostat is mounted on the interior wall above the workspace. The temperature is set by depressing the up or down arrows located at the right side of the remote panel. If interior heat is required, 
a compact onboard heater can be plugged in and set to the proper setting. Ensure that there are no combustible materials located near the heater when utilized. The rooftop unit can be set to fan or off mode when interior heat is desired. The MCT was designed primarily to rely on satellite-based backhaul due to its intention to be deployed in remote areas. However, the MCT unit is also adaptable to other backhaul sources and may not come equipped with a roof-mounted satellite antenna depending upon the ordered configuration. For the purposes of this video, instruction will be provided using an MCT unit that is equipped with a roof-mounted AVL auto-acquire satellite antenna and active Viasat Enterprise Nomadic Service for satellite backhaul. The other components of the MCT can be assembled, cabled, and configured while the satellite antenna is auto-acquiring its signal. The first step in the process is to initialize and command the satellite antenna system to acquire. Do so by opening the rear-facing door of the network enclosure located within the MCT. The upper two components in the rack are the satellite modem and the satellite antenna controller. These two components work in combination to acquire and process the satellite-based internet source. When the circuit breakers at the breaker panel are energized, the components within the network enclosure should be automatically powered on. This is indicated by the presence of illuminated LEDs and display screens where equipped. If the units are not illuminated, check the power switch at the surge suppressor, as well as the power switch that is located at the face of the antenna controller to ensure that they are in the on position. Also verify that the main ground fault circuit interrupter or GFCI equipped receptacle at the base of the enclosure has not been tripped. Once energized, the satellite controller will take a few moments to process the boot up procedure. When that procedure is completed, the LCD screen will reset and flash a field of number eights. Then we'll display this message. Hold down the keypad that is marked with the green colored check mark for three seconds. This action will command the system to start the acquisition procedure. There will be a delay as signals are processed, but once physical movement of the satellite antenna is visually confirmed, the user can move on to other phases of the MCT setup. The satellite antenna can only maintain stability and signal strength below a certain wind speed. In this case, winds exceeding 45 miles per hour. Extremely high winds can also damage the satellite antenna. For these reasons, the satellite backhaul system is equipped with a wind speed measurement device. The anemometer head of the wind speed sensing unit must be removed from the storage bracket mounted on the interior wall of the MCT behind the workspace and installed on the top of the exterior stanchion that is located on the curb side of the trailer. Loosen the knob, remove the stanchion from its holder, and place the anemometer head device into the top of the stanchion. Secure the anemometer head with the knob and slide the stanchion back into the holder. Extend the stanchion to its maximum height when it is flush with the bottom of the holder and secure the assembly in place with the knob. The anemometer head is self-powered and communicates wirelessly with the control unit that is located next to the circuit breakers. Winds in excess of 50 miles per hour will cause the satellite antenna to automatically stow. The majority of the remainder of the MCT assembly will take place at the mast structure that is located at the front curbside of the MCT unit. The top of the mast and the exterior cable junction box are accessible from the platform that is located at the front street side of the trailer. All of the work surfaces are equipped with an integral non-slip surface and are guarded by railings but use extreme caution when accessing the elevated platform of the MCT. There may also be an optional telescopic stepladder supplied with the MCT. If equipped, the ladder will be secured in a storage bracket located inside of the MCT. If the MCT had previously been stowed properly, the mast should be capped with a red padded vinyl cover. Unbuckle the two securing straps and remove the mast cover. Stow it in a secure place where it can be located and installed again upon stowage of the MCT unit. The mast is equipped to accept the standard MCT Cantenna assembly, the optional Wi-Fi array, or a combination of the two assemblies. In this video, the installation of the Cantenna assembly and the Wi-Fi array will be shown, but either assembly can be installed independently upon the mast if desired. 
Remove the Wi-Fi array from its storage bracket, located inside and to the left of the MCT unit's rear personnel door. This is done by removing the securing pin and lifting the assembly up and off the storage bracket. Bring the Wi-Fi array to the top of the mast structure and pin it in place with the securing pin and safety bale. The Cantena assembly will be installed next. This assembly is located to the right of the rear personnel door when stored. Remove the weather caps that are placed on the DIN connectors at the base of the Cantena and store them for later reinstallation. Disconnect the Cantena securing strap and remove the pin at the mounting base. Install the Cantena assembly at the top of the Wi-Fi array by placing the tubular base socket over the post at the top of the Wi-Fi array. Secure the Cantena assembly in place utilizing the locking pin and safety bale. The next step of the MCT assembly will involve the cable connections to the antenna assemblies and the MCT unit. The primary RF cables are intended to be stored on the triple hook assembly that is located at the front curbside corner within the MCT unit. However, they may be located elsewhere inside of the unit depending upon how the unit was stowed previously. The RF cables are identifiable by the color-coded bands at the DIN ends. There may be other non-color-coded RF cables stored inside of the MCT. These are intended to be spare cables in the event that the primary units are lost or damaged. The RF cables can be attached in any order and are coded as is the base of the antenna to make the connections fairly intuitive. Connect the RF cable with a red stripe at each end to the DIN port that is located within the red circle at the base of the cantenna. After connection to the cantenna, uncoil the cable hand over hand along a flat surface to prevent any damage to the cable. For this step, a second individual is useful in managing the cables. Connect the remaining RF cable to the base of the cantenna in the same fashion. The cable with the blue stripe at each end will connect to the DIN port that is located inside of the blue circle at the base of the cantenna. The Ethernet cables are supplied affixed and secured to the Wi-Fi array. Following installation of the RF cables, the Ethernet cables should be unstrapped from their storage location and uncoiled alongside the RF cables. Use one of the flexible gear ties to bundle the cables together near the mast top and prepare to extend the mast by ensuring that the cables will not snag when the mast is extended. Close the drain valve that is located at the base of the mast and remove the air compressor control pendant from its storage enclosure that is located at the bottom of the cable junction box at the front of the MCT unit. Then simultaneously pull the uppermost T-handle on the mast while pushing the air compressor switch in the up position. Continue to pull the T-handle while the section extends until it reaches its uppermost position. Have another person carry the unattached ends of the cables so that they do not drag along the ground as the mast is extended. If another person is not available, the cables can be loosely looped over the shoulder and managed in that manner as well. While holding the T-handle, the user will feel the mast section reach the top of its stroke. The T-handle can then be released. Continue by pulling on the next T-handle down from the first and repeat the procedure for each mast section ensuring that each section locks into place. If not using the optional guy wire kit, Use the colored eyelets at periodic sections on the mast to secure the cable bundle by using the flexible gear ties. When attaching to the uppermost eyelet on the mast, hold the cable bundle up gently while securing, thereby relieving some of the stress on the antenna connections when the gear tie is secured. Once extended and locked in place, open the drain valve that is located at the base of the mast. The pendant switch will no longer be required it can be stowed inside of the storage compartment at this time. Depending upon the coverage radius that is required, the mast may not need to be fully extended. The mast can be extended and locked in place at any of the fixed heights along its length. It is now necessary to connect the free ends of all the cables to the cable junction box that is located at the front exterior wall of the MCT. Unlock the access door and swing it open, if not already opened, in order to access the cable ports. Then remove the weather covers from the cable ports. The color-coded RF cables will be attached to the pair of DIN ports located inside of the cable junction box. The cable with the red stripe at each end 
is to be connected to the DIN port that is labeled 7-0. The cable with the blue stripe at each end is to be connected to the DIN port 7-1. The Ethernet cables will connect to the two RJ45 connections that are labeled CWF for customer Wi-Fi and WBH for Wi-Fi backhaul. The port that is labeled ABH will not be utilized and can remain covered unless an auxiliary backhaul source is being implemented or another pass-through to the network enclosure is required. The cable junction box door can be closed and locked with the cables connected due to the notch and brush seal that is located at the base of the door. This feature prevents tampering with the cable connections once the MCT is deployed. The mast assembly can also be rotated in order to focus coverage upon a particular target area. Rotation of the mast is accomplished by installing the turning handles. Locate the handles within the MCT and place them around the mast tube. Secure the handles in place by tightening the clamping screws. Next, loosen the two wing screws at the base of the mast and grasp the turning handles in order to rotate the mast to the desired orientation. Although the MCT's LTE signal propagates 360 degrees around the mast, signal strength will vary to some degree from different points on the antenna. The base of the cantenna is marked with bold black arrows that indicate the direction of the maximum propagation marked MAX. At this point, the satellite antenna should have already acquired its target and begun to traffic data. This can be confirmed by observing the presence of the message Acquire Complete on the LCD display that is located on the face of the satellite antenna controller. It is apparent that the security appliance and network switch are connected to the cloud when the status indicator LEDs that are located on the left side of the face of the components glow solid white. When first brought online, the satellite modem, security appliance, and network switch may be required to install firmware and or configuration updates. This will be especially true if the MCT unit has not been connected to the cloud for an extended period of time. For that reason, it is highly important that the MCT unit be powered up and connected on a quarterly basis at a minimum, preferably monthly, so that the unit is ready for deployment when the need arises. Usage of the MCT will typically be in an emergency response scenario where delays would be especially detrimental. Further detail on the monitoring and diagnosis of other network conditions is presented in other tutorials and training materials that will not be covered in this video. The default MCT unit is configured with a single Verizon Wireless Network Extender 2 for Enterprise, otherwise known as a fem to cell or e fem -to. The network extender is the component that actually provides the 4G LTE coverage bubble around the MCT through the Cantenna. The network extender has come into service when the status LED on the face of the unit is flashing green rapidly. The status LED will exhibit different colors and patterns during startup or when in a fault condition. Further information on the status LED is available within the Quick Start Guide for the network extender that is included inside of the MCT support documentation folder. The laptop PC is normally stowed inside of a padded sleeve within the drawer located underneath the work surface when not in use. The MCT is also equipped with an adjustable laptop mounting structure. Power and Ethernet connections are provided at this mount for the PC. The MCT unit is now fully operational and will supply 4G LTE voice and data coverage as well as optional Wi-Fi coverage indefinitely, providing electrical power is maintained to the unit. When it is desired to deactivate and stow the MCT unit, the steps to be taken are essentially the reverse of the setup process. The first step is to stow the satellite antenna. This step is initiated at the satellite antenna controller. Hold down the key that is marked with the red X for three seconds. The display screen will then ask for confirmation of this command. This is completed by pressing the green checkmark key once. The satellite antenna will then begin its stowing procedure automatically. If the antenna controller is not accessible for whatever reason, the stow command can also be relayed by utilizing the red button as located at the base of the antenna on the roof of the MCT unit. Likewise, the green button can be utilized to command the satellite antenna to acquire, if necessary. In the event that electrical power has become unavailable, the satellite antenna can be manually cranked to its stowed position. 
This process is completed by using the included speed wrench to turn the motor shafts that are located behind each of the black plugs at the base of the satellite antenna. One shaft will control azimuth, the other elevation of the antenna. Once the antenna is near its home position, the included compact ratchet handle and socket will have to be employed due to its limited clearance between the base of the satellite antenna and the rooftop mounted climate control unit. Once the satellite antenna is stowed, the electrical power will no longer be required for the remainder of the takedown. De-energize the MCT by placing all of the circuit breakers into their off or down position. The generator can now be stopped or the alternate power source disconnected. Stop the generator by holding down on the start and stop switch. Open the wiring entrance box at the front of the MCT and disconnect all the RF and Ethernet cables. Replace any and all weather covers. Again, a second person is useful in managing the cables as the mast is retracted. To retract the mast, close the drain valve that is located at the base of the mast and remove the air compressor control pendant from its storage position within the cable junction box. Hold the air compressor switch in the up position until it is visually verified that the pressure has been taken off of the mass locks at the segment collars. Then simultaneously pull the lowermost T-handle on the mast while holding the air compressor switch in the down position. Repeat the procedure for each mast section first applying air pressure to the mast in order to relieve friction on the locks, then retracting each segment with the T-handle and air compressor switch. During this process, be careful to not snag or pinch the cables or the user's fingers between the mast sections. Once the mast is fully retracted, disconnect the RF cables from the base of the cantana. Coil the cables loosely in a hand-over-hand -hand fashion, taking care not to kink or damage them. Stow the RF cables in the triple hook assembly that is located within the MCT unit. Unpin and remove the cantenna assembly from the mast. Stow the cantenna in its dedicated storage bracket by pinning it in place and securing the clamping arms and strap. Replace the covers on the DIN connections to prevent damage to the threads while in storage. Loosely coil the Ethernet cables that are connected to the Wi-Fi array and secure them to the array structure using the rubber clamps provided. Unpin and remove the Wi-Fi array from the mast and secure it into its dedicated storage bracket at the rear of the MCT interior. Use the securing pin and safety bail to hold the Wi-Fi array in place. Once more, ensure that the mast is fully retracted and seated Replace the red padded cover on the mast and secure in place with the two straps and buckles. The mast must always be stored retracted with the storage cover installed and the drain valve located at the base of the mast in the open position. This will prevent water intrusion during storage, prolonging the life of the mast seals. This step is extremely important, especially in colder climates. Trapped water can freeze within the mast and permanently damage the mast tubes and seals, requiring costly repair. Proper storage will also ensure the honoring of the manufacturer's warranty. In the event that a spare tire is required, the MCT includes a full-size version. It's stowed underneath the MCT at the rear. A crank handle is supplied in a black storage bag within the MCT to lower the spare tire from its stowage position within the frame to ground level. To do so, insert the crank handle into the port at the rear of the MCT and turn the handle counterclockwise to lower the spare tire. Prepare the MCT for transit by performing a final inspection in and around the unit to ensure proper securement and stowage of all equipment. Proper takedown and stowage of the MCT unit, coupled with consistently following the recommended maintenance program, will ensure that the unit is best prepared for its next deployment.